Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSB lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. In my last couple of lectures, I have been discussing on mass spectrometry and discussing about different type of organic molecules having different functionalities, how they fragment, how the molecular ion look like and what are the incremental degradation of molecules and all those things. Let us continue from where I had stopped, okay, let us look into mass spectra of amides. So, in case of amides, we do get intense molecular ion peaks. Primary amides show a strong peak at Mz44 due to H2NCO cation and this is how the fragmentation happens initially. This bond cleaves here and we get a species of mass M by Z equals 44 and also beta cleavage is quite possible and it dominates when we are considering secondary amines having more than 3 carbon-carbon bonds in this R group and then that leads to uh, eventually the carbon monoxide cleavage to form something like this, this species, this is the base peak it becomes and M by Z equals 30 here. You can see here bond breaks here, this is called beta cleavage and then this radical comes out and after that one in the subsequent step in from this radical cation this bond breaks, CN bond breaks and then this species come out and this is formed here. So, this is a typical fragmentation of amides. And let us look into mass spectra of aromatic amides. In case of aromatic amides, loss of NH2 radical results in resonance stabilized benzoyl cation that also eventually cleaves to form phenyl cation. For example, you can see this is the base peak for benzamide and then one NH2 comes out and then eventually CO also comes out and we get 77, this is for phenyl cation. So, this is how steps involved in the degradation or decomposition or fragmentation of benzamide here and base peak can be clearly seen here. Now, let us look into mass spectra of nitro compounds. In nitro compounds, initially elimination of NO2 is possible or NO is possible. In those cases, what we get is characteristic peak with M by Z value of 92 or 108 and if NO2 is lost, we get 92 and in case NO is lost, we get 108 which eventually gives a phenyl cation similar to what we saw in case of amides after CO elimination. For example, initially it can break here or it can break here. When it breaks here, we get NO, NO2 will come out if it breaks here and then we get anilinium cation and from that one HCN comes out and we get C5H5 and then if NO is eliminated and then we get this radical cation and this one eliminates one CO to form this one here phenyl cation. So, this is also very similar to what we saw in case of aromatic amides. Now, let us look into mass spectra of sulfur compounds. So, sulfur containing compounds can be readily identified by characteristic M plus 2 peaks due to the presence of 4.4 percent of 34 S isotope here. The size of M plus 2 peaks provides information about the number of sulfur atoms. So, this is one advantage with sulfur. Invariably, we see M plus 2 characteristic peaks. Thiols such as R alkyl SH form fragments similar to corresponding alcohols. The fragmentation is very similar to considering alkyl alcohols and beta cleavage results in the elimination of this cation with M by Z value of 47 and again primary thiols eliminate H2S to give a strong M minus 34 peak which in turn eliminates ethylene and primary and secondary thiols lose readily branches if there are any and uh, cleavage of sulphides are very similar to beta cleavage we come across in case of ethers. Let us look into one example here. For example, let us look into this compound here. Initially, a cleavage happens next to beta and then we get the elimination of C4H9 radical that results in the formation of 
a, this mass fragment with m by z117 and then it further decomposition happens. These are the possible cleavage paths either it can H migration can happen or CS bond can break and we can get a species here and also eventually what we are getting is this species cation with m by z value of 47. You can see here this is the base peak here. From this one what we lose is this 47 goes off and then we get 117 where we have this portion this breaks to give this one but initially this one would break another CH2 mighty to give 103 peak and then from 103 peak this goes off to give the 71. That means basically one goes here and then this migration takes place and then this portion will be there. C5H10 that is what it shows here. And also you can see the relative intensities of peaks here. M is 174 100 percent, M plus 1 is 11.33 percent and M plus 2 is 4.6. So you can see here. Now let us look into a mass spectra of halogen compounds. Characteristic isotopic patterns can be readily recognized in case of halogenated compounds similar to what we saw in case of sulfur compounds. Compounds containing one chlorine atom will have M plus 2 peak with one third of the intensity of M. For example, M37 Cl by M35 Cl is 32.5 by 100, roughly it is one third of the intensity. So M plus 2 peak in a compound with one bromine atom will have the same intensity as that of M and compounds containing two halogen atoms. So then it can be Cl2, ClBr or Br to display a distinct M plus 4 peak from which we should be able to distinguish and we can immediately tell or we can get information about the presence of uh, halogens in the molecules. If we have instead of chlorine or bromine, if we have fluorine or iodine, they have only one isotopes. This is 19F, 100 percent abundant, it is 127, 100 percent abundant. This chart what I have given uh, would tell you about molecular ion peaks for bromide and chloride compounds. The application of isotope contribution is limited by weak molecular ion peaks, but the fragments containing halides can be readily recognized. So you can see here in case of chlorine and Cl2 when you have Cl3 and also when you have Br is there when BrCl is there, BrCl2, BrCl3, Br2, Br2Cl, Br2Cl2, Br2Cl3, Br3, uh, Br3Cl. So all this uh, combination is shown here, typical ion peaks containing bromide and chlorides. So this is a very useful chart that I have shown here, a guide to interpreting mass spectra. For example, if a methyl cation is coming out, uh, you know, what is the m by z value is 15 or ethyl is coming 29. So or if we are getting a nitrogen carbon fragment, this is coming. So all this information is there and also some vital information is also given at the left hand side of the chart here and also uh, the sample how mass is detected, how mass spectrometry, typical mass spectrometry instrument works also shown here. This is a useful chart, got it from this site here. So please go through it, this is very useful site for as a reference. So let us look into some more spectra here. This is the mass spectrum of uh, kerosene and of course this one I simulated and collected the data here and 100 percent abundant one can be seen here 269 and 270 and this is for diacetyl ferrocene. Here the base peak should be around 170, 271 and then it fragments out. I have another one to show here and the different masses I have shown here, just look into it what fragment is coming out, whether first acetyl group is coming out and then eventually CP group comes out and it is getting stabilized with eventually CPFE plus it will become the finally we get it but here we should go further to see that one. That is a typical peak we observe at the end in case of kerosene. If the number of atoms with more than one isotope increases in a molecule, the distribution becomes more complex. For example, if you have too many uh, atoms having many isotopes in the system, then the distribution becomes more complex and also understanding becomes uh, more difficult. So I have shown here one such CCL4 here, of course you should remember when we are considering CCL4 we are considering 35Cl, 37Cl and also 12C and 13C and CCL3 it shows the pattern something like this and if you have CCL2 it shows and CCL it shows 2 and Cl it shows 2. 
I think I have more examples. So uh, let's look into fullerene C60. Despite fullerene not having halogens or sulfurs, shows four ions with significant abundances. So one, two, three, four here. And then if you look into the parent peak, because it's 60 and molecular weight will be 720. And this is how it is split with M peak 720, M plus 1, M plus 2, and M plus 3. Of course, the combination also I have shown here. This is 100%. And this you can see combination of 13C and 12. And here we have 13C2 and then 12. And here we have 13C3 here. And base peak comes here plus m plus 1 is shown here. So what would happen if the number of carbon atoms in the molecule increases, then what kind of molecular ion peaks we get to see is shown here. For example, if molecular m is 100 and if let us say we have 10 carbon atoms, then we will see m plus 1 and 11 in case of and then 27, 55 and 100. And if you have M plus 2, in case of this one, C25, we will see 3 and 15 and 49. And similarly, M plus 3, we will see one in case of C50 and above. And C90, it is 16. And M plus 4, one in case of C90. And that means when you have 90 carbon atoms, we will see here 3. So this shows, gives some information about uh, a higher analogs of in molecules. So this shows typical isotopic pattern for compounds containing different elements. The first one is about main group elements. Of course, when hydrogen is there, it's very much simple. Carbon is there, we will see 2. This because of 13C and 12C. And nitrogen, we will see because of 14N and 15N. And oxygen, we will see 16 and 17. And then fluorine, only one, because 19F is 100% abundant. The same thing is true in case of phosphorus. 31P 100% abundant. Sulfur we have 32, 34, and 33. So we see 3 here. And in case of Cl again, we have 35 and 37. So this is the typical isotopic patterns one should remember whenever we look into the mass spectra having these elements in the molecule. So now, similar chart I have given here for transfer metals. Uh, for example, ruthenium, this is the typical pattern. And rhodium, again, 103, we have 100%. We don't see anything else. And palladium, we have this. And silver, we have. And then in case of cadmium, it's a little bit more complex. And indium, we have two. And tin, again, it's a bit more complex. And in case of antimony, we will see two isotropic patterns, two peaks here. So isotope patterns of polyatomic ions are calculated using binomial expansion. As I mentioned, if you have more atoms having more number of isotopes, then how to calculate the isotopic patterns we see in the molecular ion peak that can be simply understood by using the binomial expansion. This is a binomial expansion we use here. And what is AA, BA, or CA, etc., are the fractional abundances of the isotopes of XA, YA, and ZA of element A, and the n number of atoms of A present in the ion n number of ions present in the ion, so the n represents. Similarly, for m atoms of B, it continues like this. If you have more than two or three different atoms having different isotopes, simply we can calculate using this formula. So now let us look into one example here. This is dicarbonyl dichloroiridium anion. Iridium has two isotopes, 191, that is about 37 percent, and 193, that is 63%. And similarly, we have two isotopes of chlorine. 35 Cl is 76% or 77%, and 37 Cl is 24%. The contributions of minor isotopes of carbon is 13 C, 1%, and oxygen, 17, very minute, 0.00038%, and also 18 O is about 0.008%, uh, or one can neglect this oxygen isotope such as O17 and O18. Following table, what I have shown is, shows how to calculate the relative abundances of each of the peaks in the isotope pattern with mass spectrum of this one. And mass spectrum mass I will be showing you in the next slide. For example, one can start writing ion composition. One should not do any mistake. First, you can consider 191 iridium and 35 Cl2. Both are 35 and CO2 is there. And this is 317. 
and fractional abundance we have to take 0.37 for this one and 0.76 for 35 chlorine and here the total value will be 0.214 and this will constitute 43 percent and then if we consider 193 iridium and uh, in of 191 now we are considering second case 193 iridium and same 35 chlorine we are considering both of them and here this is 319 because it increases and then by 2 and now 0 0.63 is considered for 193 iridium and then 0.76 continues so when you sum up we will get 0 0.364 this constitutes 100 percent and then we can take the combination now take 191 iridium and take the combination of both 35 chlorine and 37 chlorine. So, here the fractional abundance can be calculated like this. So, into 2 we have to use because the ion intensity is made up of contribution from 35 and 37 Cl. So, here it is 0.135, it is a small quantity and then of course, in the same combination we can also have 193, 35 and 37. So, this also comes here. Similarly, we have taken the fractions here and some of these two will be coming around 50 percent and then another one is now change the iridium to 193 to 191 and consider both Cl and that is 323 and then we get this uh, calculation done and it shows you 0 0.021 and now we can consider 193 iridium and both 37 so that amounts to this value and, and at the end we get the value of 7 percent. So, that means basically we can see three peaks with almost 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio in the spectrum of this one iridium dichlorodicarbonyl anion. So, you can see here this shows three. So, one is coming around about 43 percent, one is coming around and one is coming around 50 percent close to and then other is 100 percent you can see the peaks here. So, whatever the calculation we have made here is reflected in the spectrum we have observed here. So, this is how one can calculate and get to know how to interpret the molecular ion peak or fragment peaks in this fashion if you have more isotopes. And this is a very beautiful mass spectrum of hexaphenyl tin compound. This is a cationic compound and then here I have identified here the major peaks here and of course, this comes something like this very beautiful one. This is again simulated uh, using simple software I simulated this one and also collected all the data for all the peaks observed here. And this is a very useful periodic table. This gives about the entire periodic table and then all possible isotopes and their abundance everything is listed in this periodic table. So, whenever you get time you just go through it. For example, cadmium is there and almost all for reference cadmium is taken here. And now let us look into one example here, inorganic complex ruthenium simin PTA Cl2. PTA is phospho triaza adamantane, is a monophosphine here. This is bound to ruthenium and this is the simine we call. This is uh, methyl 4 isopropyl benzene and that is called a simine. This is taken in methanol in the presence of lithium salt Li plus. And left one, what I have shown here is a normal scan and resolution is 1000. You see the broader peaks for the weakly bound solvent. Uh, here you can see the broad one for weakly bound solvent and the right one is expanded one. The resolution of M plus Li peak has improved to 3000 and the weakly bound solvent adducts have disappeared uh, to be replaced by unresolved peak here. So, this is again a very interesting uh, mass spectrum of uh, ruthenium 2 compound, ruthenium is in plus 2 state. So, now before I conclude this lecture, I will show you one more. This is a crown ether and I am sure you know how to name the crown ether. You start numbering like this 1, 1, the number of atoms in the ring are 18 crown and 6 oxygen atoms are there. So, this is called 18 crown 6 ether and this can conveniently encapsulate a positive ion such as alkali metals or alkali earth metal ion to impose a octahedral geometry. So, this one will go up and this will come out and they will be remain you know, in the plane. This is the typical mass spectrum of uh, 18 crown 6 ether. The 
Malker ion peak is 264, from 264 it becomes 221, that means basically it is losing 1 C 2 H 3 O cation and you get 221. From onwards what happens? Then incremental decrease in the loss of C 2 H 4 O, C 2 H 4 O moiety is coming here and then you can see here incrementally it is losing and at the end eventually we get 45. So, if you see here this one two we are losing and from here we are losing another one and one more we are losing and then one more we are losing and this becomes the base peak for C 2 H 4 O H plus. So, this is again a typical for crown ether and in case of crown ethers the fragmentation happens with regular decrease in the molecular ion peak with a mass of 44 that corresponds to CH2, CH2O. So, let me continue in my next lecture with more examples before I conclude mass spectrometry and of course, I have a lot of problems on mass spectrometry as well. So, in the end I would try to combine some of these uh, issues related with mass spectrometry with the NMR or IR to solve the problems and till then have an excellent time. Thank you.